Parsha Kitsa. Then Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, When you tally the sum of Bnei Israel by numbering them, then every man must pay a ransom for his soul to Adonai when you count them, so that no plague will fall on them. Everyone among them who crosses over must give half a shekel according to the sanctuary shekel, which is twenty geras, half a shekel as an offering unto Adonai. Everyone who crosses over among them who is counted from twenty years old and upward is to give the offering to Adonai. The rich are not to give more, and the poor are not to give less than the half shekel, when they present the offering of Adonai to make atonement for your souls. You are to take the atonement money from Bnei Israel and give it for the service of the tent of meeting, so that it may be a memorial for Bnei Israel before Adonai to make atonement for your souls. Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, You will also make a basin of bronze with a bronze stand for washing. You are to place it between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it. Aaron and his sons are to wash their hands and their feet there. Whenever they go into the tent of meeting or come near to the altar to minister, to present an offering made by fire and smoke to Adonai, they are to wash with water so they do not die. They are to wash their hands and their feet so that they do not die. It is to be an eternal statute for them, to him and to his offspring throughout their generations. Moreover, Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, Now take for yourself the best spices, five hundred shekels of flowing myrrh, half as much sweet cinnamon, 250, also 250 shekels of sweet calamus, 500 of cassia, after the sanctuary shekel, plus a hin of olive oil. You are to make holy anointing oil from it, a fragrant mixture, blended as the work of a perfumer. It will be holy anointing oil. You are to anoint the tent of meeting with it, the ark of the testimony, as well as the table and all its articles, the menorah and its articles, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils, and the basin along with its stand. You are to consecrate them so that they will be most holy. Whatever touches them will become holy. You are to anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them so that they may minister to me as Kohanim. Speak to Bnei Israel, saying, This is to be a holy anointing oil to me throughout your generations. It must not be poured on human flesh, nor are you to make any like it with its formula. It is holy, and it must be holy to you. Whoever mixes any like it, or whoever puts any of it on anyone unauthorized, shall be cut off from his people. Then Adonai said to Moses, Take the sweet spices, steak, ochnia, and galbanum. The spices and pure frankincense are to be in equal measures. Make a fragrant mixture from them, a blend like the work of the perfumer, salted with salt, pure and holy. You are to beat some of it into powder and set it before the testimony in the tent of meeting, where I meet with you. It is to be most holy to you. But the incense which you make with its formula, you are not to make for yourselves. It is to be holy for you, for Adonai. Whoever makes any like it, to breathe in its smell will be cut off from his people. Chapter 31 then Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and all kinds of craftsmanship, to make ingenious designs, to forge with gold, silver, and bronze, as well as cutting stones for sitting and carving wood, to work in all manner of craftsmanship. Also look, I myself have appointed with him a Holiab, son of Amishak, of the tribe of Dan. Within the hearts of all who are wise-hearted I have placed skill, so that they may make everything that I have commanded you, the tent of meeting, the ark of the testimony, the atonement cover that is to be on it, all the furnishings of the tabernacle, the table and its utensils, the menorah of pure gold with all its utensils, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering with all of its utensils, the basin and its stand, the woven garments, the holy garments for Aaron the Kohen, the garments for his sons to minister as Kohanim, the anointing oil and the incense of sweet spices for the holy place. 
They are to make them, just as I sh how I commanded you. Then Adonai spake to Moses, saying, Speak now to Bnei Israel, saying, Surely you must keep my Shabbatot. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, so that you may know that I am Adonai who sanctifies you. Therefore you are to keep the Shabbat, because it is holy for you. Everyone who profanes it will die. For whoever does any work during Shabbat, that soul will be cut off from the midst of his people. Work is to be done six days, but on the seventh day is a Shabbat of complete rest, holy to Adonai. Whoever does any work on the Shabbat will surely be put to death. So Bnei Israel is to keep the Shabbat, to observe the Shabbat throughout their generations as a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and Bnei Israel forever. For in six days Adonai made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he ceased from work and rested. When he had finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave the two tablets of the testimony to Moses, tablets of stone written by the finger of God. Chapter 32 Now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said to him, Get up, make us gods who will go before us. As for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what's become of him. So Aaron said to them, Break off the golden rings that are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people broke off the golden rings that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. He received them from their hand and made a molten calf fashioned with a chiseling tool. Then they said, this is your God, Israel, which brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. Then Aaron made a proclamation, saying, Tomorrow will be a feast to Adonai. They rose up early the next morning, sacrificed burnt offerings, and brought fellowship offerings. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to make merry. Then Adonai said to Moses, Go down, for your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have become debased. They quickly have turned aside from the path that I commanded for them. They have made a molten calf, worshipped it, and sacrificed to it, and said, This is your God, O Israel, that brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Adonai said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore leave me alone, so my wrath may burn hot against them, and so I may consume them and make from you a great nation." Then Moses sought Adonai his God and said, Adonai, why should your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you have brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say he brought them out to do evil and slay them in the mountains and to annihilate them from the face of the earth? Turn from your first fierce wrath and relent from this destruction against your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, to whom you swore by your own self and said to them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of I will give to your offspring so they will inherit it forever. So Adonai relented from the destruction that he said he would do to his people. Then Moses turned and went down from the mountain with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, tablets that were written on both sides, on one and on the other, the tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God, engraved on the tablets. When Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said to Moses, There is a sound of war within the camp. But Moses said, It is not the sound, voice of a shout of victory, nor is it the voice of crying from defeat, but I hear the sound of singing. Then it happened as soon as Moses came near the camp, he saw the calf and dancing and his anger burned hot. So he threw the tablets out of his hands and smashed them at the foot of the mountain. Then he took the calf that they had made, burned it with fire, ground it to powder, scattered it on the surface of the water, and made Bnei Israel drink it. Then Moses said to Aaron, What did this people do to you to make them bring such a great sin upon them? Aaron said, Don't be angry, my lord. You know these people yourself and how they are set on evil. They said to me, Make gods for us and go before us. As for this Moses, the man that brought us up from the land of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. 
So I said to them, whoever has any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it to me and I threw it in the fire and out came this calf. When Moses saw that the people were unrestrained because Aaron had let them run wild to become a joke among their enemies, Moses stood at the gate of the camp and said, Whosoever is on Adonai's side, let him come unto me. Then all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together to him. And he said to them, This is what Adonai, God of Israel, says. Every man put on his sword and go to and fro from gate to gate throughout the camp and slay his brother, his friend, and his neighbor. So the sons of Levi did as Moses said. And that day from among the people there fell about 3,000 men. Then Moses said, Consecrate your hands today to Adonai, so that he may give you a blessing today. For every man has been against his son and his brother. So it happened the following day, Moses said to the people, You have committed a horrendous sin. So now I will go up to Adonai. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. Then Moses returned to Adonai and said, Alas! These people have sinned greatly and made gods of gold. Yet now, please forgive their sin. But if not, please blot me out of your book that you have written. And Adonai said to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. Now go, lead the people to the place that I told you about. My angel will go before you. Nevertheless, on the day when I take account, I will hold them accountable for their sin. So Adonai struck the people because of what they did with the calf Aaron had made. Chapter 33 Then Adonai said to Moses, Leave, get out of this place. You and the people that you have brought out of the land of Egypt into the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your seed. I will send an angel before you. I will drive out the Canaanites, Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Head up into a land flowing with milk and honey. But I will not move within the midst of you, so that I do not destroy you along the way, for you are a stiff-necked people. When the people heard these dreadful words, they mourned, and no one put on any ornaments. Adonai said to Moses, Say to Bnei Israel, You are a stiff-necked people. If I were going up among you for one moment, I would consume you. Take off your ornaments so that I may consider what to do to you. So Bnei Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments from Mount Horeb onward. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off from the camp, and he called it the tent of meeting. So it happened. Everyone who sought Adonai would go out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people would arise and stand, everyone at the door of his own tent, and look after Moses until he had gone into the tent. After Moses entered, the pillar of cloud descended, stood at the door, and he would speak with Moses. When all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, they all rose up and worshipped, every man at the entrance of his own tent. So Adonai spoke with Moses face to face, as a man speaks with his friend. Then he would return to the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not leave the tent. So Moses said to Adonai, You say to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my eyes. Now then, I pray, if I have found grace in your eyes, show me your ways, so that I may know you, so that I might find favor in your sight. Consider also that this nation is your people. My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest, he answered. But then he said to him, If your presence does not go with me, don't let us go up from here. For how would it be known that I or your people have found favor in your sight. Isn't it because you go with us that distinguishes us from all the people on the face of the earth? 
Adonai answered Moses, I will also do what you have said, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Then he said, Please, show me your glory. So he said, I will cause all my goodness to pass before you, and call out the name of Adonai before you. I will be gracious towards whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will be merciful. But he also said, You cannot see my face, for no man can see me and live. Then Adonai said, See, a place near me, you will stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and cover you there with my hand, until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you will see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Chapter 34 Adonai said to Moses, Carve for yourself two tablets of stone like the first ones, and I will write upon them the words that were on the first tablets which you broke. Be ready by the morning. Come up to Mount Sinai and present yourself to me there on the top of the mountain. No one is to come up with you, and do not let anyone be seen throughout the entire mountain. Even the flocks and herds must not graze in front of that mountain. So he carved two tablets of stone like the first. Then Moses rose up early in the morning, went up onto Mount Sinai as Adonai had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tablets of stone. Then Adonai descended in the cloud, stood with him there, and he called on the name of Adonai. Then Adonai passed before him and proclaimed, Adonai, Adonai, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness and truth, showing mercy to a thousand generations, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, yet by no means leaving the guilty unpunished, but bringing the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children to the third and fourth generation. Then Moses quickly bowed his head down to the earth and worshipped. He said, If now I have found grace in your eyes, my Lord, let my Lord please go within our midst, even though this is a stiff-necked people. Pardon our iniquity and our sin. Take us for your own inheritance. Then he said, I am cutting a covenant. Before all your people I will do wonders such as have not been done in all the earth or in any nation. All the people you are among will see the work of Adonai, for what I am going to do with you will be awesome. Obey what I am commanding you today. Behold, I am going to drive out the Amorites, Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, Jebusites before you. Watch yourself. Make no covenant with the inhabitants of the land where you are going, or they will become a snare to you. Instead, you will break down their altars, smash their pillars, and cut down their ashrith poles. For you are to bow down to no other god, because Adonai is jealous for his name. He is a jealous god. See that you do not make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. Otherwise, when they prostitute themselves with their gods and sacrifice to their gods, someone will invite you, and you will eat from their sacrifice. Do not take their daughters for your sons. For their daughters will prostitute themselves with their own gods, and cause your sons to prostitute themselves with their gods. You are not to make for yourselves metal gods. You are to keep the feast of matzot. For seven days you are to eat matzot, as I commanded you, at the time appointed in the month of Eve. For in the month of Eve you came out from Egypt. Every firstborn of the womb is mine. And from all your cattle you are to sanctify the males, the firstborn of ox and sheep. A firstborn donkey you are to redeem with a lamb, but if you do not redeem it, you shall break its neck. You must redeem all your firstborn sons. No one should appear before me empty-handed. For six days you will work, but on the seventh day you will rest. During plowing time and harvest you must rest. You are to observe the Feast of Shavuot which is the first fruit of the wheat harvest, as well as the feast of ingathering at the turn of the year. Three times during the year all your males are to appear before Adonai Elohim, God of Israel. For I am going to cast out nations before you, then enlarge your territory. 
So no one will covet your land when you go up to appear before Adonai your God three times in the year. You are not to offer the blood of my sacrifice with the mitts, nor should the sacrifice of Passover festival remain until morning. You are to bring the choicest first fruits of your land into the house of Adonai your God. You must not boil a kid in its mother's milk. Then Adonai said to Moses, Write these words, for based on these words I have cut a covenant with you and with Israel. So he stayed there with Adonai forty days and forty nights, did not eat bread nor drink water. He wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the ten words. Now it happened when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, when he came down from the mountain that Moses did not know that the skin of his face was radiant, because God had spoken with him. And when Aaron and all B'nai Israel saw Moses, the skin of his face shone and rays, they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called out to them, so Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke to them. Afterward all B'nai Israel came near, and he gave them all the mitzvot Adonai had spoken to him upon Mount Sinai. And when Moses was done speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. But when Moses went before Adonai, so that he could speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. When he came out and spoke to B'nai Israel what he had commanded, B'nai Israel saw the face of Moses, and that the skin of his face glistened. So Moses put the veil back over his face until he went in to speak with him.